chapter 23, beginning with verse 1, the book of Acts, chapter 23, and beginning with verse number 1. Paul looked straight at the Sanhedrin and said, My brothers, I have fulfilled my duty to God in all good conscience to this day. I have fulfilled my duty to God in all, all right. good conscience to this day. All right. And then from the 24th chapter, also the book of Acts, beginning with verse 16, Acts 24 and 16, Hear now these words, Acts 24 and 16. So I strive always to keep my conscience clear before God and man. Right. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. Amen. This morning I want to ask you, do you have a good conscience? All right. Do you have a good conscience? So many times we come to church and we fail to understand that one of the major roles of being a part of the body of Christ is that you grow spiritually. All right. We can shout all we want, but if you do not grow spiritually, all right. something is wrong. All right. All right. So what is your conscience? In the spiritual realm, your conscience is the voice of God that speaks to you All right. about issues of right and wrong mm -hmm. right. and values and fairness. Your conscience speaks to you. It's the voice of God. And Paul says that in this passage, he said, I, I've reviewed my life and I've served God with a good conscience. Yes. In fact, Paul says in, in that 24th chapter, he says, I go out of my way to make sure that I have a good conscience. Mm -hmm. Now, many of us get into the habit of just ignoring mm -hmm. our conscience. All right. All right. And the Lord speaking and combining the heart and the mind, as we call the soul. The voice of the Lord speaks. It's easy to ignore your conscience. I'll give you a test. All right, all right. Have you ever been in an argument with your husband or your wife, mm -hmm. your boyfriend or your girlfriend? And after the argument, something tells you that maybe you should apologize. I know this doesn't happen here. But the first thing that rears up is I'm not apologizing because I was not wrong. Y'all looking at me strange, so I'll just... I'll preach to the cornfield out there. <laughs> Your consciousness says, you know, it's not about whether you were right or wrong, but maybe it was about how it all panned out. And at first, our carnality raises up that non-spiritual portion. It says, no, I'm not apologizing. In fact, they need to apologize to me. Now don't y'all look at your husband or your wife or your friend. Don't do it. It rears up in us that on the one hand, the voice of the Lord is trying to speak to us. But our human condition, that's your conscience. The Apostle Paul says that if nothing else, you want to have a good conscience. 
I never cease to be amazed at some of our people who they were raised one way, but they live totally so contradictory. Amen. Let's be honest. I don't know many parents that have raised their children to sell drugs on the street. I don't know many people who have raised their children to kill somebody. I don't know many people who have raised their children to think of no one else other than themselves. Your conscience is the voice of God that will speak and speak. But the problem is, is that we always want to move our conscience out of the way. In fact, when you read 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses uh, 1, through, uh, 1 through 2, he says that if you keep on doing that, that you can have what is called a seared conscience, a burnt conscience. And a seared conscious or a burned conscious means that you don't care what the Lord is telling you. In fact, your actions can become immoral. Sometimes in counseling couples and particularly where there has been extramarital affairs going on in the relationship, Sometimes people will try to justify it by saying, she would do it to me. He would do it to me. She doesn't care. He doesn't care. And I say, knock it off. What does your spiritual conscience tell you? Forget about finger pointing and blaming. God says, I am trying to speak to you. And are you listening to the voice of God? All right. All right. All right. That is your conscience. It's tough to come to church and have a bad conscience, isn't it? Or to have no conscience. It's, church, it's tough to call yourself a Christian and have no conscience. In fact, our foreparents used to say, in good conscience, I cannot do certain things. All right, all right. In good conscience, I cannot say certain things. Last night I was looking at a YouTube video. In church, there was an argument at this church in Alabama, and tempers got heated. And they were fighting in the church. They had to call the police in the church. I'm glad we never had that at Progressive. If it was, it for my watch. And the words that came out of folks' mouths right. in the church. And the only thing that I, I, I could say is said, what kind of conscious did they have? And do we have a good conscious? First of all, the conscious does three things. First of all, it is a God-given capacity for us to evaluate ourselves. We, it's easy to get in the habit of evaluating everyone else. And to think about how they spoke to you and how they acted to you. Oh, I've heard you, I've heard you. Pastor, did you see the look on her face? Did you think about the look on your face? Pastor, did you see how they spoke to me? Did you think about how you spoke to them? Pastor, they make me mad. I know you got your Sunday best on and you're looking great today. But understand one thing, boo-boo, that you too have the capacity 
to make folk mad. Our consciousness helps us to evaluate ourselves. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul talks about a good conscience. He also talks about a seared conscience, which means that we just constantly ignore. No, we don't apologize. We'll wait for someone else. No, we're never wrong. We'll wait for someone else. We'll pick apart the faults of someone else, a seared conscience. And then ultimately it leads to an evil conscience. Well, I just do what I want to do. In my life as a pastor, a bad and evil conscience listened to some of the experiences as I went through my pastoral law, which is over 30 years of ministry. A woman leaves her husband after learning he was diagnosed with cancer. A man leaves his wife after learning she had lost her job and they could no longer have the lifestyle he was accustomed to. A friend of many years all of a sudden goes against you. Your job lets you go after many years of faithful service, and it's not because of any financial reason. <coughs> Two people bear the last name, but there is no marriage. Just going through the motion. In fact, if they had to be honest with each other, instead of loving each other, they're on the brinks of hating each other. How do we live with a bad conscience when, in fact, if you're not careful, maintaining a bad conscience, a seared conscience, or an evil conscience will haunt you more than anything else? How many times have I been at a funeral and someone has said, crying there, and they said, you know, I wish I had have told them that I loved them while I had a chance. All right, all right. And I didn't. Our last discussion was an argument. And the next thing I know, the person is gone. You see, when God speaks to your conscience, it's for your own good. It's for God telling you, I know what's coming down the road. I want you to have a good heart and a wise heart full of love. Don't you allow the devil to get in the way. To tell you, no, I'm not going to apologize to you because you're the one that was wrong. Let me tell you what's so interesting about God. And I speak from my own example in which I was very upset with a person for many years and God said to me, I want you to apologize. Now, you know I had to talk to God. All right. All right, Pastor. He ran down the list. God, here's what the person did. Now, I don't know why I have to remind you because you know all things, but just in case, since you're running the whole world and you forgot what happened in my little world, I'm going to tell you, here is what they did. And after going through that whole laundry list, the Lord says, apologize. Now, Lord, you know, you know, uh, last time I, I, when I looked at them, they didn't even look like them. they'd be ready to take an apology. I, I don't even like the way they look. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit, I want you to have a good conscience about this matter. I want you to listen to my voice and to be obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's why we're living in Groton, Connecticut. And so after protesting with God, I apologized. I went to the person's office and, and apologized. Now, you know, I, I had to put in my twist. 
Well, I'm not apologizing because I was wrong. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit said, no, that's not what I told you to do. I didn't, no, wait a minute. I didn't tell you to put that in there. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, the Holy Spirit says, no, I want you to apologize. We are in his office, and he didn't even look up. And I'm standing there like, okay, God, I instead of apologizing, I want to punch him <laughs> and talk about him and call him everything but a child of God. I'm just confessing to y'all. Y'all won't put this in the beacon, will you? I was getting ready to turn around and say, all right, God, I did it. And he said, Kevin, thank you. He said, next week is my last week at work. He says, I've been diagnosed with stage four cancer. And I don't know how long I have to live. Thank you. And he said, but I, too, stubborn and bullheaded and need to apologize to you. He said, I don't know how long I have on this earth, but I want to leave it with a good conscience. Mm -hmm. You see, sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we get in the way. Yeah. We get in the way of how God wants to use us. I'm sure everyone in here today, you've got a story of how someone has wronged you or someone has said something against you or someone has crossed you in a wrong way. We all have those stories. Amen. Amen. But if God shows up and says, my brother or my sister, I want you to have a good conscience. I want you to be the bigger woman or I want you to be the bigger man. I pray that you don't say, no, no, God, you don't know what it felt like and how they treated me. Because ultimately what God is saying, I see down the road. I see what you don't see. And I don't want you to live your life with a guilty conscience and a, and a seared conscience. I don't want you to become an evil and a cold-hearted person. Because if all you do is respond to people, you can become a hard-hearted mm -hmm. and a cold-hearted mm -hmm. person. Paul stood before the Sanhedrin. And when you read the rest of that text, boy, they were getting ready to dog Paul out. And Paul said to them, I have served God with a good conscience. Now, that's the first thing today. Can you say that I've served God or I'm serving God with a good conscience? We can say that until offering time anytime. <laughs> I know I've been there. The Lord said, no, you need to give a little more. What? <laughs> you need to do a little more. Are you kidding me? A good conscience. He said, I've served the Lord. And then in 24, he says, look, I have reviewed my life. Paul said, one of these days, I don't want to stand before God with a guilty, a seared, an evil conscience. So I ask you this morning, do you have a good conscience? Do you have a good conscience? Or is your conscience based on propping up yourself? Is your conscience based on propping up yourself? Can God tell you to apologize even if you believe, no, I shouldn't? But is God speaking? Or have you lived your life in such a way to tell you, say, no, it's all about me? Timothy talks about a seared you know your conscience is seared when you can fight in church, cuss in church. You know your conscience is seared 
when, 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 when there is extramarital affairs and it doesn't even bother you. When you can steal and it doesn't bother you. When you can lie and it doesn't bother you. That's a conscience problem. And it's a problem when you can admit that it doesn't bother you. What that says to me that you've totally tuned out the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life. Every Sunday we come to church and we praise God and we thank God. But do you not understand that the goal of church is for you to grow spiritually? The goal of church is for you to say, I'm not like I used to be since the Lord has come into my life. I don't do the things I used to do since the Lord has come into my life. The goal of worshiping on Sunday is to grow spiritually. And as you age, you want to age with grace. Grandmother, these stories remind me, boy, the things that bother me used to bother me. They don't bother me anymore. The things that used to get me all upset and all uptight doesn't bother me. That's when you're growing spiritually. That's when the Bible is more than just a book to read, but it's a book that you digest and you believe that the Lord does and will fight your battle. You believe that the Lord does and will make a way out of no way. Do you not know that the worst person that you can come across is not one with a gun, but one that knows how to talk to the Lord? One that knows and says, baby, you can dig a ditch for me, but the Lord will cover it up. Oh, I wish I had a praying church. How many of you have lived long enough and you say, preacher, I've seen the Lord open doors that no man can shut. I've seen the Lord make a way out of no way. I've seen him be a table around you when your enemies are standing around the wall and he's feeding you. I've learned to have a good conscience, to be at peace with all men. Paul says to the Sanhedrin, doesn't matter what you do to me, in fact, it is a story in that 23rd passage, passage where they're getting ready to fight in church. Mm. And Paul says, I have served God with a good conscience. I have lived with a good conscience. You know, this Labor Day weekend, many families will come together and they'll have family reunions and they'll get together fellowship. And in every family, there's tension. In every family, there's unresolved issues. In every family, there are concerns and challenges. I heard an article one time, he says, nine out of ten families has got problems, and we believe the one family is lying. Nine out of ten admit they got problems, but we believe in one family. They're lying. And how do we come to grips and have a good conscience? If your family were to go home to, to Jilly Jordan tomorrow, how do we come to grips with a good conscience? Or do we live our lives talking about what I should have done? what I should have said, how I should have acted, how I should have behaved, how I should have conducted myself. When the Lord speaks to your heart, my brothers and sisters, I challenge you. I challenge you to say, God, in my heart, I want to have a good conscience. Paul said, 
I press myself all the time to have a good kind. He said, I strive. I strive. I struggle. I know, I know, I know. I know you're sitting here today and you say, Pastor, that's tough. There are some folk that as I think about them, I really want to curse them out. I know, I know. I know there are some people that you can just beat up in your mind. I know, I get it. I know that there are some folk that you really want to give a piece of your mind. And my only commentary, if there's 10 people that you want to give a piece of your mind, don't do it. Because you will not have any mind left. (laughs) But my goal, my goal is to have a good conscience. A good conscience in my house is a good place to start. Are you in church this morning and you argued all night long? (laughs) And maybe the person didn't even come today. They didn't want to be here. Are you looking at each other cross-eyed? I must be hitting the nerve because y'all are real quiet. (laughs) That child that you struggle with, I know you just want to strangle him or her some days. But what if the Lord says, I want you to reach out even more. That's a challenge. But the Lord speaks to you for a reason because the Lord wants to use you for his service. The Lord many times has to work through your attitude, work through your issues, work through your drama, and at the end of the day, the Lord says, wait a minute. I'm blessing you. You're not blessing me. And when I speak, listen. Because when it's all said and done, Apostle Paul said, God, I've served you with a good conscience. Parents, try to serve your children with good conscience. Husbands and wives, learn to love each other and serve each other in good conscience. Families, with the bickering and fighting in our world today. Eight years ago, I did a funeral of a woman in Toledo Her son killed her because she would not fix that Negro a cheeseburger. Killed her. Well, obviously in jail. And who does he call? The pastor of the church. And what does he want me to hear? His conscience is eating him alive. Don't ignore the voice of the Lord that speaks to your conscience. Don't get into the habit because what's going to happen, you'll sear your conscience and it'll become an evil conscience. Sometimes in marriages, God has put opposites together for a very reason. Mm. And our tendency is to make each other alike and God says, no. I've seen her weaknesses, and I've given him strength. I've seen his weaknesses, and I've given her, and I'm going to put you all together. And you spend all of your life fussing and fighting and arguing, and you never see the value. And sometimes in churches, God has sent pastors to churches, or God has sent churches to pastors, and they're so busy fussing and fighting until they fail to see how God has knitted them together. Can somebody say it's about God? Not about us. And he speaks to us, and he speaks to our constant. Revelation says, and the moment you hear my voice knocking at the door of your heart, don't ignore it. Respond. Do you have a good conscience? You leave church today. Maybe there's some folks in your life that God is saying, regardless of who was right or who was wrong, maybe the most important thing is the relationship. And that you can be at peace. 
And you say, you know what, at some point in life, it's not about how I got treated. But I want to make sure that I've treated everyone the way I want to be treated. And you can live life with a good conscience. You can live life and walk on top of the world. But pastor, that doesn't take away what they did or what they said. Well, let me close with a little good theology. That if you believe anything, do you believe that the Lord will fight your battles? Yes. Oh, yeah. Is there a witness in the house today? Yes. Do you believe that God, if God is for you, that he's more than the world against you? Is there a witness in the house today? Do you believe that God can make a way out of no way? Is there anybody that's lived long enough here today to say, Pastor, I've seen him make a way out of no way. I've seen him dig ditches for me, Pastor, but the Lord didn't cover them up, preacher. I've seen God bless me, preacher. Now, if you believe it, if you believe it, then all you have to do is be obedient to the voice. Because God says, look, I want you to have a good conscience. I want you to go to bed at night. Not worried about that someone said something wrong. I've lived long enough myself. Been called the N-word and everything else. And the Lord has taken care of Bedford. I'm a witness. But you want to have a good conscience. You want to say, Lord, I'm listening to your voice. Maybe you're sitting in church today and you say, Pastor, I just had a bad argument with a family member. I don't want that relationship to be that way. Listen to the voice of the Spirit. Because it, when it's all said and done, you need to have a good conscience. Now, if you can ignore the Lord's word today, all you want. But the longer you live, it'll eat away at you. It'll eat away at you. Your money came by the way. It'll eat away at you. A bad conscience will eat away at you. A guilty conscience will not let you be happy. It's time for children to reconcile with parents. Parents reconcile with children relationships to reconcile. We do a lot of foolishness. And God says, I want you to have a good conscience. I want you to start teaching your children how to have a good conscience. Never was ceased to be amazed when I saw two sisters tell me that they hate each other. In good conscience. How can you be raised in the same house and hate each other? And so your spiritual growth is, you know what, sis? Even if you don't do right, I'm going to do right. Because I want to go to bed at night with a good conscience. And if you do right by God, does anybody know he'll do right by you? You'll do right by the Lord. He'll do right by you. Let the church say amen. amen. The doors of the church open for you right now. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I don't have a church home. I'm not affiliated. I want you to come down and join. And I want you to be a part of a fellowship where you can grow spiritually. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I, I want to have a good conscience. There's some issues in my life that I need prayer with. And as I struggle through, this altar is open and I ask that you would come. I don't want you to leave church today with 
without a heaven a good conscience Lord place me on the path I can work through this altar is open for you right now maybe you're saying the past I've been pushing away I've been pushing back have a good conscience in my home with my spouse with my children I want to have a good family but I've got to work through some things the altar is open for you right now as we come be honest with where you are speaks to you right now. I feel in my spirit as I'm speaking to you right now. The Lord is calling you to come to the altar. Maybe there's a bad relationship. And you've been at odds for a long time. Maybe you've heard the voice of the Lord speak to you and pride, anger have gotten in the way. The Lord wants you to come to the altar. And it begins right there. As we prepare to pray, this altar is open. As the music plays softly. 